Hello everyone, welcome to Developer Checkpoint. In today's video, we are going to learn the concept of public key and private key in the blockchain. So what are the topics that we are going to cover today? So we are going to learn about the public key and the private key. We are going to understand the concept of transaction signing and verification. And after that, we will see how transaction is verified by the various nodes in the blockchain. So without any further ado, let's dive into the video. So when you become the part of the blockchain, you are provided with a wallet. This wallet is used for making the transactions on the blockchain. This is a virtual wallet and it contains two types of keys. One is the private key and the other one is the public key. So let's try to understand both of these one by one. So firstly, let's discuss about the private key. So as the name specifies, the private key is to be kept secretary and not to be shared with anyone else. This private key is used for digitally signing the transaction on your behalf. So you should not share your private key with anyone else. If you somehow share your private key with someone else, then the person will be able to make the transactions on your behalf. This private key is basically like the password of your account. The second type of key is the public key. We can share this public key with the other nodes. This public key is used by the other nodes to verify the transaction. A public key is basically your identity on the blockchain or you can say the wallet address on the blockchain. It is derived from the private key by running some type of encryption on top of that. So we can create a public key from the private key, but we cannot create a private key from the public key. So we can share the public key with the other nodes and other nodes can verify whether the transaction was signed by using the particular private key using our public key. So when you perform any type of transaction on the blockchain, you store some kind of data inside your node. So let's assume that person A is giving some amount of Bitcoin to person B. So the person A will sign this transaction using his private key. So here we are encoding private key with the red color to specify that it is very dangerous to share the private key with someone else. Okay, so we are having our data and we have a private key. We will run a hashing algorithm on top of that and this will create a digital signature of the particular transaction. Once you are having the digital signature and your other nodes will have your public key. So here we are specifying public key with the green color. That means that it is okay to share your public key with the others. So other nodes in the blockchain will take your digital signature and will pass it to a verify function with the public key. And this verify function will return true or false, specifying that the digital signature is valid or not. The digital signature was signed by the private key and the public key belong to the same entity. Okay, so let's assume that we are having a small blockchain here. We are having a blockchain of four nodes. So let's focus on the node A here. So if we are part of the blockchain, the node A will have a wallet. And with the wallet, it is going to have a private key as well as the public key. Now you are going to share your public key with the other nodes or the public key is basically your address on the blockchain. So if you are performing any type of transaction on the blockchain, that information will be shared with the other nodes and the other nodes will use this public key to verify your identity. Okay, so let's assume that we are making a transaction. So a person A or the node A is transferring $10 to node B. Okay, so the node A will write this transaction on its ledger. Okay, and it will sign this transaction to verify that node A has written this using its private key and will create a digital signature. Okay, so here we are having the transaction data and here we are having the digital signature. Now we are going to distribute this transaction data with the other nodes. So the other nodes will get a copy of this transaction and they are having our public key as well as the private key. Now these nodes are going to verify this transaction. So they will use our public key to verify whether the transaction was done using our private key or not. So the node B will do the same node D will do the same and node C is going to perform the same. So the multiple nodes have verified our transaction and once the transaction has been verified by majority of the players, 
we can say we have achieved the state of consensus among the various nodes and this transaction will become the part of the blockchain now so this was the very high level understanding of the use of public key and the private key in our blockchain so let's try to see our demo application that specifies the use case of public key and the private key okay so this is our demo application so firstly we have to create a public key and private key pair so we can create a random private key and the corresponding public key can be derived from that this private key should not be shared with some anyone and this public key can be shared with someone else okay now let's move to the signature part okay so for example we are having the message as a giving b 10 dollars and this is our private key we will sign this transaction once we have signed this transaction we will get a signature okay or the hash that we have discussed okay and this is done by the node that is performing the transaction so the node that is performing this transaction will send the information of the transaction as well as the message signature to the other nodes what the other nodes will do the other nodes are going to use our public key they will be having our signature and they will have the message they will run a verify function and if everything is correct they will be returned true that the transaction is valid and if we try to morph anything so for example instead of 10 dollar we change it to 100 dollar and everything will remain the same we will see that the signature does not match and the transaction is not valid so let's try to see a example of a transaction so for example our message is transferring 20 dollar from this account to this account so these account addresses are the public key addresses of both the accounts or both the wallets and this is the private key of the person that is performing this transaction so this private key will be the private key of this thing okay so we will click on sign so this is the signature so other nodes will have this information so they are going to have the information that we are having a 20 dollar transaction from this account to this account and the signature of the transaction that was done by the sender is this signature and they can verify this information using the verify function so as we discussed that a block chain consists of a block and that block contains data the data part is the same part where we are having a group of transactions each transaction contains the amount the account address of the sender as well as the account address of the receiver and the signature of the particular entity that is performing the transaction we will dive deeper into the transactions of the blockchain in the next video so guys that is for the video we learned about the public key and the private key and their use cases in the blockchain in the next video we are going to understand the transactions in the blockchain so see you guys in the next video till then goodbye